so welcome to uh, Virtual Tabletop Gaming Live. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, thank you. I'm here <laughs> in my office where I make my games. <laughs> um, would you, for those who don't recognize you, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Håkon Gordyr. I'm from Norway. Uh, I'm the designer and illustrator of a game called The Villagers yeah. and an upcoming game called Streets. And that's mostly what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to have a um, uh, we're going to have a sort of uh, wandering chat about um, about both these games a little bit, but mainly mainly about Streets, which is the upcoming game that's uh, uh, kickstarting uh, very shortly. Um, so um, so we your first game is Villagers, which is a kind of um, well, I'll try and describe it, and then you can tell me I've got, I've got it wrong. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of like I feel like it's an economic civilization simulator except it's actually it's actually a card game and tableau builder um yeah. that, that's how i feel about it um and then we've got streets which is a tile laying um uh similarly like kind of matching kind, kind of got a pushy luck element because of um between players um and uh with similar economic um links in it um uh that, now, so what is Streets, and is it a, is it a sequel to Villagers? Well, yeah, uh, it's what I call a spiritual sequel. Uh, mm. It's uh, it's different from Villagers in that Villagers is a pure tableau builder, uh, but you're just getting cards and playing cards. But mm -hmm. this is more like uh, Carcassonne, where what you do on your turn is just you place a tile with a building on it into a city, and that building is going to score depending on where you place it. Mm. So if I build a restaurant next to your hotel, my restaurant is going to benefit economically from the customers from your hotel. So you kind of leech each off each other like that. And that's the idea. So what it has from villagers is kind of the economy that's based on set collection. Mm -hmm. So yeah. instead of collecting wood, you're collecting tourists and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's a modern spin on it. So. Yeah. So the idea is like, uh, oh, if you want to play a tab tableau builder, you play villagers, and if you want to do a Thailand game, you play streets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's oh. the thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they look—they look very good. They look—they look very good together, don't they? Yes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. One of some of the most lovely small box design as well, I must say. Just uh, very, very tightly put together. Uh, not an inch of space uh, wasted there. Um, so. Um, yeah, so so it's sort of a sequel, and it is, as you say, updated, isn't it? Um, because we are in a more modern period, I guess, yeah. in terms of the roles. That we're, yeah, we're we are in. Yeah, we are in right now, basically, uh, instead of in the Middle Ages. So <laughs> definitely, <laughs> completely different time period. Um, so can you tell us how how Streets works then? Um, sure. Like how how it feels to play between players and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So as I talked about, what you do is just place a building on your turn into the city, and it scores based on where it is. And it's called streets because buildings that are in the same street are going to have effects on each other. So each street is like a card tableau, really, mm. that all players share. So that makes it very interesting. So if you're building a combo somewhere, I can get in there and benefit from that combo somehow, and vice versa. Uh, so that's the basic of it, really. Um, and uh, yeah, there are also meeples there uh, that move around and they buff your scoring as well. It's kind of a parallel to like in villagers, you place co coins on villagers to buff mm. their score. So that's the version of that in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I liked your Carcassonne um, comparison earlier because there's that an element of streets is you um, you can like end a street, can't you? You can sort of like put. A, a fin like put a block on the end that means you can't add anything more to it and that's yeah. kind of got the sort of like finishing a castle element of carcassonne to it yeah where you you kind of you're deciding when someone else has had enough points <laughs> yeah know, yeah, yeah. In some, in some well, yeah yeah rado uh, put a lot of emphasis on that in his video uh but uh, that's not the only reason why you close it off uh no. when you close off a street sort of like if i have a street running uh, this way yeah. if a street comes in here it blocks it off and then it scores uh, yes, you can do that to limit another person's scoring, but uh, you also do it because you want to score yourself. Uh, because, yes. yeah, you have to keep scoring because you, you're not allowed to own more than five buildings at a time. Ah, uh, yes. So you have to keep the flow going, otherwise you'll have to abandon a building, actually. So there's some pressure here to, uh, I guess, what you call it, um, 
instead of just trying to expand forever, you have to commit and say, okay, I'm satisfied with what I have now, and now I have to start building something new. Yeah, yeah. You're sort of optimizing for the best score you can get out of um, out of what you've got in front of you, rather than what you could have, and that's sort of the the kind of threat the threat you've got in your own brain as well. Yeah, it? um, it's about not getting too greedy, uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> and also there's an element with the meeples moving uh, around. So if you close off a street, you get to choose where they go. Mm -hmm. And then okay. you can send them to your own buildings, making them more, more valuable. So you get rewarded by ending stuff. Yes, yeah, so I, I, re I really like that as a mechanic. And I, I focus on the nastier side of it yeah. because because I that's how I like to play these sort of oh, games. Oh, that's fine, but... yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but obviously there are, as you say, there are lots of good reasons for uh, for finishing up a street. Um, so, yeah, well, because in villages we were, it was medieval things. You you would find like a, a wheelwright in the deck, um, and uh, like the like the uh, woodcutter and things like yeah. that. And so they're like very classic medieval stuff. Um, yeah. uh, who who have we got here? Who are we meeting in in, in the streets of streets? Yeah. So it's a, it's a very different perspective. Like in villagers, uh, I really love how back in the day you could live in a village and you knew the guy who made your shoes and mm -hmm. you maybe had a role in the village. Maybe you were supplying leather to that shoemaker mm -hmm. or cutting the wood that was used to build your house. You know, everything is very relatable and mm -hmm. people are important and their jobs are important. While yeah. streets is more like how the modern world works, where you have uh, <laughs> investors using kind of targeted marketing. So. Mm -hmm. You as a player are player are is basically a property investor, and you divide people into four groups. There are shoppers, parents, tourists, and hipsters. <laughs> and the, <laughs> so those replace the resources like wood and ore and all that. So mm -hmm. people are the resources. Yeah. You want to get the right people to your buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. If you if you have a tourist attraction or an ice cream shop or something, you want to have lots of tourists there because those yeah. are going to make you money. You don't want the hipsters, for example. Yeah, yeah. But if you have a microbrewery, you definitely want the hipsters. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> those are those people, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's interesting because like, um, so in villages, the the solo mode especially had like kind of a um, uh, like. A criticism of capital in it somehow you know it was like you could read it yeah. as like a, you know like a workers uprising you know against the countess especially in the solo mode you know yeah, um uh whereas like in, in a multiplayer mode you you feel like the um the interconnectedness of the villages around you and, and what everyone's got you can borrow you have to buy things of other people if you need it and that sort of thing and that's they get points for that but um but you you felt like there's an interconnectedness there and i wonder if is there a sort of a satire in this as well of the kind of uh, property speculation, maybe? Yeah, I, I guess both games are kind of very capitalist, right? Because mm. all you want to do in these games, to win them, by the way, is to make the most money. That's yes. how you win, and that's all you're really focusing on. So it's nice to have a counterweight to that. Mm. And I, yeah, we do that in villagers, obviously, with the Countess, Countess uh, solo mode, and uh, in streets, yeah, there's this whole thing that it's people, there's kind of a creep cake of modern life in how people kind of are commodities <laughs> yes exactly yeah so that kind of evens it out a little bit i think well uh, <laughs> yeah yeah so have, so, have you won in the solo mode much or how are you doing in villagers um i have not won in the so okay. <laughs> i just get kick i just kick get kicked in every single time <laughs> yeah it's um, quite hard yeah <laughs> that's, and that's what i like about it though because it's just um the worst thing is the solo mode that you can beat the first time because yeah. you, you know, uh, the challenge isn't there. Um, I really like, I, I, just to um, riff on that for a second, I, I really like it just because it is so hard and because you've also got the summer and winter cards, so you've got this sort of sense of growing threat. Uh, yeah. Um, the Countess is just nasty. She will just take people from your village sometimes. <laughs> you know, stuff like this. I think it's really, I think it's really, really good. Uh, but yeah, so do you, um, can you, in terms of designing the characters, though, for this for streets, yeah. um, did you approach it in a different way? Did you did you are you thinking about particular people when you designed <laughs> any of the characters in it, or the shops, or any of the um, uh, the buildings, or anything like that? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, it's mostly about the buildings in streets. We have mm. character meeples, but uh, yeah. the main focus is the buildings. So I try to make them sort of be like characters. Uh, yeah. And I have a background as an animator, and that really helps me when I make artwork. So 
if you notice in villagers, uh, they're all doing something. They're all in the middle of some pose, some activity. Mm, and that true. comes from me being an animator because I always want to imagine how characters move and mm -hmm. take it really seriously. If you're making hay, you better look like you're making hay. And <laughs> I think it's quite boring with all those games where they just post like they're posing for a photo, all the characters. Yeah, it's true. Cool at least they're doing something, right? Uh, <laughs> but I couldn't do that trick with streets, right? Uh, because it's just buildings. So yeah. what do I do? Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to make buildings that kind of tell a story that mm. you feel that people are living there. So maybe it's not a fresh building, but it the building was something else to begin with, and then people repurposed it to something else, and maybe the building is old and it's kind of skewed, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I That's... actually, yeah. They're going, sorry. Yeah, uh, and for streets, I, 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 it was tricky to make really buildings that are as appealing as the villagers are. So mm. what I did is I looked at old computer games like, did you play Theme Park? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So what they did there, which is very clever, is like if you have the shop selling uh, hamburgers, it's just a big hamburger. That's the shop, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With that low quality pixels, right? You can still identify, yeah, that's hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> and the fry shop is just fries, a big yeah. fry, and so on. Which I always thought that was very strange that you had to go to two different places to get your fries and your burger, but you know. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you have these tricks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so I did sort of the same thing in streets. Each building has this big thing that makes it obvious what it does. Um, I think that concept works really well um, to make it quick to identify when you look at it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, re I really like that, yeah. So um, have you got any examples of that that you'd like to talk about particularly? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, well, we have here like, uh, here is the DIY shop. Uh, <laughs> It says, you can do it, and there's a big hammer and a screwdriver on top. Uh, that makes it, yeah. If I made it like a realistic one, it wouldn't, oh, it would be really boring. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I have an ice cream shop that's just a big ice cream, and uh, yeah. a microbrewery that's just a big, huge aluminium keg of uh, beer that's being made. <laughs> and, yeah. Things like that. And, uh, yeah. No, I like, I like. Hair, uh, I'm in editing, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Um, cool. Uh, and so, tell us tell us about the solo mode for um, for streets. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to disappoint you a little bit. It's not uh, as much stuff as in the solo mode for villagers. Oh well, I will forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't do something like the Countess in streets. It wouldn't work, unfortunately, because mm. of the way the whole game works. So the, mm. how dynamic the whole board is, and yeah. So what we have instead is um, you play against this guy called the Grifter, which is <laughs> like an algorithm, uh, yeah. an app that automatically buys and sells buildings. Mm -hmm. A bit like we have in the stock market in real life. You know, yeah. you can they can be better than real traders, and uh, they're a threat to their job. And that's kind of funny because <laughs> even jobs like that are being automated. Uh, <laughs> But I made it kind of cute and funny, so it's like a little robot, like one of those telepresence machines with yeah. a tablet on it and a little face on it, and it's just driving around with a necktie and selling buildings. That's the theme <laughs> there. <laughs> and yeah, you're just gonna build, a, play like you do in multiplayer, and then the mm -hmm. grifter is gonna build a building every time you build one. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna play really fast. You don't have to do a lot of work on the grifter's turn. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really slick and easy to implement solo mode. Not a lot of extra rules. Yeah, that's very good. That's uh, yeah. I, I always find it really difficult when there's a solo mode that asks you to make really tough decisions for the person, the the AI you're playing against. Yeah. You know? um, I like it when it's kind of like taken away from you. Or um, the really good thing that I like in solo modes is, and one of the things I like about the Countess um, in Villagers is that they kind of cheat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, and it just like because it makes your life easier as the player. Um, yeah. Um, I really, I really like that. So, um, so that's really great. Um, so thank you. I think we've actually just got everything there, haven't we? Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just want to mention uh, the, the the solo mode in uh, streets. Oh yeah. Uh, you can use the expansions with it, and that's something you couldn't do in villagers. Um, oh, that's interesting. That adds a lot of replay to it uh, because we have individual player powers actually in streets. Yes, um, what, what are they called? They're surveyors. 
Is that right? Uh, no, we call them consultants. Consultants, that's it. Sorry, sorry. So they're, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like, you're not them, but they're helping you. And they're very powerful. It's more mm. like Marco Polo or a game like that. They give you a huge advantage that's very overpowered, but all the powers are like that. Yeah. And yeah. you can use all those in solo mode uh, to play in different ways. And when you do that, you just give the grifter lots of points at the beginning to make it harder for you. So you still have to work to get your points. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Cool. Um, so anything else we need to plug? Uh, no. I, I, I'd, lo I'd love for people to check out the Kickstarter if they like. And i just like to tell everyone, if, if you have a designer or a publisher you like, uh, check out their Kickstarters. Uh, that's the best way of supporting them. To mm. They all try to make a living of it, but it's quite hard. So yeah. That's a really good way of supporting them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's great, yes. Support your local Kickstarter. That's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what we're saying, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Right. Well, thank you for talking to me today. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Had a good, great time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>